According to all known laws of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh, there is no way B-Troopers should be playable. They end on nothing but monster negates and die to Nibiru. B-Troopers, of course, are the best deck anyways, because B-Troopers don't care what humans think is tier 1. Black, yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, black. Ooh, black and yellow, yeah, let's shake it up a little. B-Trooper is the newest TCG exclusive archetype, nowadays called World Premieres, cause apparently the old term wasn't fancy enough, and the playability of those ranged from BA and Dangers to Dreamers and Warrocks. Thankfully B-Troopers are on the better side of the spectrum and honestly may just be one of if not the best designed combo deck ever. Their combos, while they do follow a red herring, are reliant on more than one card in hand, unlike a certain trend going on right now, and are mostly non-linear and rather short, while also not ending on an extremely oppressive endboard, including floodgates or seven omni-negates. Since I like my deck guides to be of quality, this video will literally tell you everything you need to know, including an introduction into the cards and combos, an in-detail deck profile, as well as gameplay showing off situations that you can't really do in Dueling Book solo mode. If that's too much information for you to handle at once, there's also timestamps in the description. And with that being said, we'll start off with the introduction, or whatever you want to call it. Since this deck uses a ton of old insect cards no one has ever read in their lives, showing the cards without a combo or vice versa would make little sense, so I'm just gonna show you the full combo and follow up play, while also explaining what the cards do. If you don't want me to talk you through a combo for 5 minutes, alternatively there'll be a non-commentary replay after the section, so I'll just skip to the timestamp. So, as I mentioned before, this deck doesn't really have one combo you do every time. So what I'm gonna show you is one of the possible ones. It's very, the combos are very close to each other, so this should give you the rough idea. And we're gonna start with two normal summons, cause this deck does have a Nightmare Goblin on fucking crack. Um, starting off with Sting and Buggy. And I guess we just start off by normal summoning Sting. On summon is gonna add a Battle Wasp from deck to hand, that's gonna be Pin. Um, we then immediately special summon Pin by its own effect, um, because we control another Battle Wasp. And use its effect, don't forget that, I keep forgetting that every single fucking game I play. Um, on um, while it's on the field it burns for 200 for every Pin you control. Not Battle Wasp, but Pin. That's just, literally just a trickster effect, burn for 200. Um, do that and you win in time. Then we link those two away into Armorhorn. This is our Nightmare Goblin. It's gonna allow us to immediately normal summon another insect type. So we're gonna normal summon Buggy, use Buggy's effect. On summon, it's gonna summon another Buggy from either Hand, Dagger, or Grave. So we're gonna do just that. And then use these two Buggies to go into the Insector Link Monster, which is gonna on summon discard a card to equip an insect to another insect we control. So we equip our Resonance Insect. The Insector Link has another effect that allows us to shuffle three insects from the grave into the deck and draw a card. But for this combo we need all the insects that are currently in grave, so we can't use that right now. And next we're gonna link those two away into Invincible Atlas. And um, we're gonna talk about his effects later. Um, first of all, the Resonance Insect now triggers when it's sent from the field to the graveyard, not once per turn, mind you. Um, it searches any level five or higher insect from our deck to our hand, which is gonna be our Sting Lancer, which we're also talking about a little bit later. Next, we're using Armorhorn's second effect, banishing three insect monsters from our grave to special summon it back. Just banish Pico Resonance Insect and the pin. You like to have all as many buggies as possible in rotation. Manage these three, summon it back, then Resonance second non-hard once per turn effect triggers. If it's banished, it mills another insect from deck. So we're gonna mill Goki Pole, and if Goki Pole is sent to the graveyard, it adds a level 4 insect from deck to hand. And if it's a vanilla monster, we can immediately special summon it. We're gonna talk later about which vanilla to play, spoiler, it's not this one. Either way, next we use Invincible Atlas' effect, tributing a vanilla to special summon any B-Tuber from deck, which is gonna be another copy of Sting Lancer. On summon, Sting Lancer adds a B-Tuber spell or trap from deck to hand, which is gonna be the government mandated counter trap, Flying Sting. Just a counter trap negates monster effects, destroys them, sets itself on the grave, the usual stuff. Next, we're gonna link those two. Uh, Armorhorn gets banished, of course, because it was summoned by its own effect into Seraph and Papillion, which on summon gains a few counters, and then you can remove those counters to summon level 4 or lower insect from your graveyard, but not both in the same turn for some reason, um, because otherwise it would have been too overpowered, I guess. Don't know why Selene is a card then, but uh, who cares? 
Uh, next, we set a card and pass on this. Um, this is, of course, a monster negate. And Sting Lancer in hand during the main phase. Um, targets an insect in your grave and the monster in your opponent's grave. Puts them both under the deck and special summons itself. So this is just a DD Crow on crack. And then our third interruption is gonna appear during our opponent's turn. Because immediately in the draw phase, unless you want to play around Imperm, I guess, you use Seraphim's effect. To remove a counter to summon back Sting the Poison, which on summon is once again adding a Battle Wasp to our hand, which is going to be Arbalest. Um, on normal summon, a special uh, Battle Wasp from Grave, this is going to be our follow up. And um, the other effect of Sting um, is a quick effect that tributes another insect on our field to target an opponent's monster and negates its effect. So we have um, a breakthrough skill, a counter trap, and a crack DD Crow, which is three interruptions. Um, but the really good thing is gonna be the deck's follow-up. So um, showing that is gonna be a little difficult because you can't really assume what your opponent's gonna do. Because we're kind of playing solo mode right now. So what we're gonna assume is they cleared literally everything you have. And um, you used the DD Crow at some point, which its effect is gonna search your B-Trooper field spell. And let's assume they cleared this as well. So um, played through everything, cleared everything. They probably didn't kill you. Killing you through th three interruptions is kind of hard. So let's go with this. They cleared your board, they passed your turn. You're gonna draw your one blind card. This is relevant. So if you have literally nothing else left, maybe um, with your starting combo you had like two more hand traps, it's all gone out, this is all you ha have left. You're guaranteed follow up. The nice thing you can do now is activate your formation. Formation is once per turn, summon a B trooper from grave and then take a damage equal to its attack. Um, what you bring back depends on if you started with Buggy or not. If you started with Buggy, you can just bring that back. Otherwise, you bring an Atlas back, tribute itself to summon a Buggy from deck. But we started with Buggy, so we just used the Field Spell to summon back Buggy. And Buggy is gonna on summon summon the other one. Now we can overlay these two into Cicada King. If you don't know what Cicada King does, it's just a monster negate on field. So if your opponent while clearing your board also end it on a negate. This can now be used to prevent the negate from negating anything you do. Because your follow up is not over yet. This is where it really starts. Alternatively you can also, if they control a really small monster or something in defense, run this into that, put a Zeus on it, clear everything and then continue playing. Both is possible but um, if you keep it on field just to negate something your opponent has, you kill with this. So all you need to do is normal summon Avalast which is gonna special summon the Sting back from Grave and the Sting is gonna search another pin which is then special summon, use the effect again, burn for 200. Next we link any of the Battle Wasps away into another Insecto link which is gonna use its effect again, discard our random card to equip another Resonance Insect to our Battle Wasp. Now we can use her effect to recycle. Uh, this is probably already in your extra deck because you used the DD Crow, which requires you to put something back. And this is usually what you put back. So let's just assume we did that. And then what you usually just recycle is something you want in your deck generally. So like the vanilla, a Goki pole, and one of the Sting Lancers because you only play two. Put those back in the deck and you get another random card once again. Then we link those two away, sending the Resonance Insect to the graveyard, back into our Seraph and Papillion. This is why we shuffle it back, we want a Link 3 Insect here. Unicorn also works, but do whatever. If you need another removal, make Unicorn. And um, Resonance Insect is gonna trigger again because it was sent to the graveyard, adding Doomdozer to our hand, which we are gonna immediately special summon by banishing Resonance Insect and the pin. Don't banish your Link Monster here for Reasons that will soon become very apparent, if not already. Um, your resonant insect was banished again, so you can once again mill a Goki pole, which is gonna be triggering once again, adding you Aztec. It's basically a Gigantus for insects, so you can banish your Goki pole, special summon it, and then link those two into an Axis Code Talker. Trust me, this is an Axis Code Talker. I definitely own one. You now have three different attributes to pop cut with Axis Code. If you wanted to go into Unicorn on the way instead of using the uh, Zeraphim, you would have one pop less, but you could have gotten the spin because you have one card to discard. Um, and this is also just game, even those two by themselves. Um, so yeah, the follow-up of this deck is kind of crazy. Um, even if this wouldn't kill for whatever reason, you can still slap a Zeus on here and still win. Which is what I think is really the good part about this deck. It has like two separate follow-up routes, which 
Um, kind of pug. What you see in front of you is my current personal list, which may or may not be optimal. Spoiler, definitely not optimal. It should just give you the rough idea. Highlighted in red are the minimum amounts you should play off the cards. First we have 3 Sting, your best normal summon, which you want to draw as much as possible. It's pretty self-explanatory. And for a couple of next cards, uh, the same reasoning applies, so I'll mention that once now and just refer to this every time it comes up. Searchable cards may be listed as play 2 because you can recycle everything other than your banished zone and banish like 10 cards per turn. You want to always have one of set card in rotation and it's good by itself and thus it doesn't hurt to play multiples. This applies to Arbalest. Uh, you can technically play one but it won't do you any good, especially since some combos literally require you to play two. This also applies to Pin. This also applies to Buggy but with three instead of two since you need two in rotation for it to work. Bomber is one of your best extenders, being able to chain block your normal summon. In case you don't know what chain blocking is, an explanation will be on screen now, feel free to pause the video. In your ideal combo you search one Lancer and special the other, so two is required. Resonance is your actual best normal summon summon so you want to draw it and even without drawing 3 it can come up. You wouldn't play Drytron with less than 3 Benton. Oh wait. For Gokipo the 2 of rule applies again and the rule would apply for Doomdozer but it isn't good enough by itself. Having 2 insects in the graveyard is a little bit too much setup for just an extender. Feel free to try out 2 but I wouldn't recommend it. Drawing the vanilla sucks so you play 1. About the vanilla, I'm not playing the correct one. There's a bunch of options you can choose from. They have different advantages. You can play the one with the biggest attack to do the most damage. You can play the one with the lowest attack so you can theoretically pop more monsters. So just pick your poison on that regard. Aztec is another extender that is also searchable by Goki and necessary for your access code line. So you want at least one and more dependent on your other extender options cause some are getting really expensive. Formation is a decent extender and your search will follow up, so you need at least one. Fly and Sting is your Konami mandated counter trap, so of course you play one. The rest is just non-engine cards, feel free to try out whatever or even play more insect extenders. Um, I tend to brick a lot recently, so please go ahead and try that out. For the extra deck we play two Atlas. One would technically be fine, but I'd rather use my Insector Link with cycles on my main deck cards and the extra deck isn't super tight so playing two doesn't hurt you. Triple Armorhorn, it banishes itself so you can't recycle. It. Triple Pico, she can technically recycle herself, but playing 3 means you can banish her rather than your main deck resources, which is beneficial to you. And also some combos use 2 of her turn 1 without recycling any of them, so 3 feels kinda mandatory. One Seraphim, uh, you usually don't have any issues recycling this, however I wouldn't speak against playing 2, this really just feels like personal preference. Don't worry about Zeus being expensive, that card is all but mandatory. I literally haven't summoned it once in like 100 matches played, so feel free to just play whatever instead. Cicada King however is very good, you can either end on it or use it for follow up as shown earlier. Access Code unfortunately seems very mandatory, it's one of your only forms of removal and the combo that summons it doesn't summon Bowlsort nearly as easy. Maybe there's a workaround, I haven't found one yet, and I also haven't really bothered, let's be honest. The Megatons are out in like two weeks, so who cares. The rest is just flex slots, Unicorn and Phoenix for extra removal since the deck desperately needs that, and Almirage for a really cringe chance, so you can maybe end on one interruption. For the side deck, just play whatever. Just keep in mind that Insect Kaiju's Contact C and Retaliating C fit in this deck really well. Of course, there's also some options that I didn't show here, which I'll just list now. Ready Fusion is by far your best extender, but the fusion may as well not exist. Trinbo is another extender which is searchable by Sting, however it locks you into Insect, which can be really cringe. 
Run it if you don't want to spend money on the Ready Fusion Engine or more Aztecs. Shinobi Insect is a generic insect link. Your extra deck has a ton of flex spots, so you might as well. Retaliating T can technically be main decked as it's kind of a starter. I wouldn't recommend it though, because it definitely doesn't hit every deck out there. Floodgates exist. Make of that what you want. As with everything else in this video, if I missed anything, it will probably be written in a pinned comment. I think next it would probably be appropriate to look at the deck's strengths and weaknesses a little. So for the deck's strengths we have it being fun, probably the most important part. I'm not calling this the most based combo deck ever for a reason. It's rather resilient to the weak hand traps if you want to call them that. Being able to play through them most of the time with just an extender. It is probably the strongest guaranteed follow up I've ever seen of any deck. Most decks tend to have like one line at most and not two completely separate ones. And it gets 7 more cards in Burst of Destiny, essentially doubling its card pool, so surely that's gonna have some good cards, right? Right? And now to the funny YouTube comments. When getting Nibiru'd, you can likely end on 1 to 2 interruptions that can be dealt with by your opponent using the battle phase, so it's better than nothing but still very like Luster. You're gonna see an example of this later in the replays. Yes, this deck lacks any interaction whatsoever with spells and traps, which is kinda covered by Atlas being hard for them to out, but not really. We can only hope the next wave of support kinda fixes that. This deck does indeed somehow lack any kind of in-engine removal that doesn't include Koki Pole summoning a literal vanilla. Once again, let's hope the next wave somehow fixes this. And now I'll sign off kindly asking you to subscribe, like and share the video if you enjoyed it or just learned something about the deck, which I sure hope you did, would be kinda awkward if not. Either way, following this plug will be a couple of replays showing off the deck and scenarios that you can't really reproduce alone, which should give you a better idea of how the deck plays.